This is Natural Powerlifting Radio. Deadlifts, chicken nuggets, video games. This is Check My Total, a powerlifting podcast with Timothy Payne and Andrew Henson. Thank you everyone for tuning in for another episode of the Check My Total podcast. This podcast is sponsored by blenders that don't chop your frozen fruits. That's right, blenders that don't fully chop your fruit. So I think it's just going to be me and T-Pain today, and we're going to talk about, uh, I, I guess we're going to talk about people that do versus people that plan. And that's right. kind of what we're going to talk about. But before we get into this, I just created my first smoothie I've ever made in my whole life. And it was, it's a fruit smoothie. And, uh, it turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with it, except my blender doesn't do the best job of doing, of cutting up frozen fruits, but that's okay. It's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a hand blender. It's not a, it's not a powerful blender at all. Um, but I'm prepping for the vegan challenge is really what I'm doing. Well, I was trying, I was trying to ask you this off air, but what all, what all is in your smoothie? So here we go. It is um, a cup of milk, one cup of milk, which I'll replace with almond milk next week. Okay. Um, I found some uh, vegan yogurt. That's okay. it's non 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 dairy yogurt. It's made with coconut milk. All right. And uh, you know it's uh, it's actually pretty good. It's vanilla flavor. It's actually really good. So I put. I want to say half a cup of that in. So a cup of milk, half a cup of this coconut uh, vanilla yogurt, then one one whole banana, and then two cups of frozen berries. I think it was strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries. And I got a nice little pink smoothie here with some berries berry residue in it so did that make like one glass for you or is becca drinking one um it made it made enough for two maybe even three people okay um does the does it mostly taste like banana though no actually i don't i don't actually taste a banana Really? So it tastes like the other berries? Yeah. Um, okay. It tastes like the other berries, and it tastes like that yogurt I put in it, which is yeah. actually really good. Well, that's good, man. You're getting a so, little precursor to what the next couple of weeks are going to be. Yeah. I wish I had a better blender. My, my blender just... Uh, it's just not very good. Well, we might have one at the house we can let you have or borrow. Mm. Yeah, I'll help you out a little bit. Since y'all got the y'all got the Enterprise Blender, yeah, y'all don't y'all don't need whatever y'all have now. Pretty much, but uh, the podcast today, like Andrew was talking about, we're going to talk about people that talk about doing something and people that actually do something. Mm-hmm. So, what were you saying? Were you having an issue at work or something? Is what spurred this thought? So, I was. No, it wasn't an issue at work, but we've had issues at work that I should point this out. <laughs> so, it, the I was watching a YouTube video, and it was, uh, I think the title of it was People That Do Versus People That Plan. And what it is, is it was talking about software development. Um, I forget the guy's name. It's He's from Europe. Uh, Stephen Moff something, I don't know. Uh, anyway. He runs like a, uh, I think he runs like a web dev shop or something. Uh, but anyway, I was watching it and he was basically saying there's two different types of people, people that do and the people that plan. In the software world and programming, there's always new languages coming out. There's always new frameworks coming out and new ways to do something. And to be honest, about 90% of the time, it's not worth investing in because 
there's just too many new things. Like, I, there's so many languages out there you can switch to and use, and half of them do the half of them can accomplish the same goals. There's a couple. There's a few languages that are specialized, but so he's basically saying there's a lot of people that take a lot of planning. With all with all the new stuff coming out, you got to pick which language or framework will work best for your problem or your business or whatever you're trying to solve. And a lot of people will spend most of their time planning, and and they might even ha get halfway through planning, and a new language comes out, and they'll be like, oh, let's switch to this language. And they'll just keep planning and planning, and they'll be in tutorial land because they'll be learning new things all the time. And they'll basically just be stuck in this learning mode, in this, in this tutorial mode, and they'll never actually make a product, or they'll never actually finish anything. So I was listening to that and I was like, well, that carries over to the lifting world. That happens quite a bit. So I guess that's what we'll discuss. Okay. See, I, I was thinking of it in a whole completely different way. Like when you said we should talk about this this weekend, but I get, I get where you're going now. Um, oh, to me, you're you almost, that? well, just to piggyback off of what you're saying to me, it almost comes off like you're saying, you need to stick to one plan instead of, you know, following whatever the trend is or getting on the internet and reading something else. Is that what you're trying to get at? Yeah. Uh, but I think it's just more that, that applies to it. I think it's just more of a general, like, you know, in our, in, in the fitness industry, it's always, and especially in the strength world, it's always the new thing of, Oh, it's, this month, it's the uh, Bulgarian method. That's the hot thing to do. Or I should hop off my program and do that. Or or it's like, oh, RPE is a new thing. Let me switch the foundation of what I know works for me and switch switch 100% to RPE and forget percentages completely. Yeah, it's just kind of that, that mindset. Yeah, what I think the issue with that is you're never sticking with one program long enough to know if it works or if it doesn't work at all. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you're constantly lily padding, being like a frog and jumping from one thing to another, yeah, you're never you're never sticking with one thing long enough to even know if you're gonna get results out of it. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. yeah, I thought you meant like people that talk about doing something versus people that actually do what they say they're gonna do. Oh, there, there's that too. Yeah, there's that too. There's plenty of. Uh... Plenty of people out there that are all talk. Yeah. Um, it's it's funny talking about going back to YouTube. I saw a video either yesterday or the day before. It was actually, it was a GQ video, and it was Wiz Khalifa talking about his most famous songs. Anyways, I tried to listen to all kinds of music. This particular video was Wiz. But Wiz Khalifa was saying how he used to go in the studio, and he would spend, you know, all day trying to write one song. And coming up with lyrics and, you know, planning out the melodies and just trying to figure out how this one song was going to go. He'd spend, you know, a couple of days on one song. And then eventually he just had this epiphany of like, I need I need to go in there because, you know, time is money for one thing. I need to go in there. I need to lay down a track and I need to move on. And, you know, kind of just let that track be what it is in those few couple minutes. And he was saying, at some point, you got to wake up and decide, you know, you're the professional. And as the professor, as the pro, as a professional, you need, you need to quit, you know, dwelling on something going wrong or what happens if I don't do this exactly the right way. Like, you need to have enough confidence in yourself just to, you know, go ahead and pursue the original thought that you had. Yeah which I think kind of ties into this, you know, be, be confident in what you're doing. If you say, I want to eat a banana today, then go eat your banana. You know, don't think about, well, is a banana as nutritious as this apple over here? Should I really eat the apple? It's like, no, just, just stick to your guns. And if you want the banana, eat the banana. Yeah. I mean, that, that's essentially kind of what it is. Um, and, you know, I think it, it happens a lot, you know, depending on how long you've been in the game. But, you know, strength sports and stuff, there's always a new way to get strong. Which is, 
an oxymoron. At least I don't know if actually I don't actually know what an oxymoron is, but <laughs> it's something because they're always claiming there's new ways to get strong. There, do this plan, do this. But in reality, I mean, the human body hasn't changed in many many years, and you know, there is really there's not a new way you get strong. You just get strong by doing the same principles that people have been doing for thousands of years. Hey, here's the, here's the definition of oxymoron. So a figure of speech in which apparently contradictory terms appear in conjunction. So like unfaithful faith, you know, that oh, yeah. thing. falsely so, true. A new way to get strong is kind of an oxymoron. That works. Yeah, kind of like you, you said, People have been getting strong for hundreds, thousands of years, however long we've been alive. And uh, at the same token, though, I think there's more than one way to skin a cat. Like, yep. I just think you got to believe in what you're doing. I know we've already had a podcast talking about this, but it's it's just so true. Like, if you, as far as the strength training goes, if you have a program and you do it and believe in it, I think your mind will make you have gains to a certain point just because you think it's working. Yeah. Yeah, it's I think so. Kind of like a placebo. I don't I don't know how to explain it. But like and, anything, your fundamentals are the same, but and you especially if you're a, a little a more advanced guy. Yeah. A more advanced guy who's been going who's been lifting for a while, like why why are if you're if you've hit like an elite total or like close to it, like why do you need to listen to what some fitness personal trainer said? He probably because that personal trainer probably hasn't done anything with his life. Well, so especially if it's just some, yeah, if it's just some rando on the internet whose article you're reading. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, I guess we're kind of randos to people listen to this, but <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm not. I haven't. I don't care if people sue me. But as far as personal training goes, even with that banana comment I was making, if you trust your trainer to say eat the banana, then go ahead and eat the banana because you're you're trusting, you're putting your trust in the other person. As an athlete, it's almost better sometimes to shut off your brain and just work out, not have to think about all the, you know, all the math or whatever that goes into it. Yeah, your programming. That's true. And, you know, I kind of see this a lot of times is these people that like to plan and spend just extraordinary amounts of time trying to figure out what's going to work for them. But, like, I know people that get called up with making their weekly workout or their next cycle or whatever. And they'll get called up in things like, oh, man, should I do, man, should it be four sets of eight or four sets of seven? And they're like yeah. spend forever going back and forth, being like, "I guess I'll do four sets a." And it's right. like it, it's like it's like that. This is not going to make that big of a difference, right? I agree. I think the only time you have to get real nitpicky about your programming, which this is kind of contradicting what you said earlier, but is when you get advanced because you're trying to find that slightest advantage to put you over the top. That is true, but. Also, if you're advanced, you should already know what kind of works for you. Right. So what we're talking about is just, you know, just a slight thing. You're not changing your whole routine. You might just, you know, add something or subtract something from what you're already doing. Which we've kind of gotten way off topic, but yeah, I just personally, as far as weight training goes, I don't understand why people try to make it so complicated. I know. I mean, it's, it's always a new thing. There's always a new, a new fab. And I guess with Instagram and everything else, people are just trying to basically sell you a product, sell you a program, sell you a way of doing something. I don't know. You gotta, ha- you gotta have a filter and know, know what's up. That's true. You have to know what is up. And I think, I think a lot of people just get caught up in the noise. Well, yep. I mean, it happens in almost any field you're in. There's always, like, I know a lot of times in my field, 
there's always something new coming out. Always a new thing to learn. Always a new language. Always a new framework. But hey, always, you don't use them until you really need them. Yeah, but hey, even if you do go get a personal trainer or do buy one of these programs off the internet, stick with it the 12 or 8 or however many weeks that it is. Like, don't just do it for two weeks and, you know, if you're not going anywhere, bail out. It's 12 weeks for a reason. Yeah. Like, you need to... As far as weight training goes, you need to stick with your program for however long your program says it is. Yep. Because, I mean, it's way more in depth than this, but like I said, it's it's 12 weeks for a reason. Yeah, and, you know, I think I think a lot of people start to jump shit. Everyone's fine the first week or two, but, man, on that, like, fifth week of the training or sixth week, it's like, I don't know if this is working, and they always hop. I know there's people that I've known that have never finished a, a, complete, uh-huh. a complete cycle. They just hop around and hop around. And really, with any training cycle, that is about when you start plateauing out the third or fourth week. Yeah. Because, I don't know, when you're, when you're starting something new, I guess you're muscles and everything react to it differently so that's why you get a little bit of gains at the beginning yeah but if you yeah if you can grind through the middle then the latter weeks you should be moving up again yep your your numbers mm-hmm. yeah but i guess like i said the whole point of this podcast is just pick something and do it quit overthinking everything yeah i mean there comes a time when you have to plan but there also comes a time to execute. Yeah. And you got to know when to execute and when to stop planning. And I mean, and look, the worst come worst comes the worst. You like you go through and you, and you went through a crappy program. You went through a crappy 12 weeks. Like you didn't I don't think you're going to get weaker. No. Nah. I, I mean, unless you just do something crazy and like max out every day and injure yourself. Yeah, or if you're, if or you know, if you are on one of these programs where you're like the Bulgarian thing, where you're squatting three times a day or whatever it is. Yeah. Where you're just getting burned out. That's a that's a whole different thing, though. Yeah. But. But another, just to go back into the overthinking thing, which I'm probably about to make a lot of people mad, but one of the things that kills me is when lifters come off the platform after doing one of their attempts. Mm-hmm. And then they have to spend their whole 60 seconds like talking to their handler or their liftoff person about what to do for their next attempt. It's like, man, after I get done trying to push or pull or squat something, I know where I need to go. <laughs> like, I know how crappy that felt as soon as I'm done racking the bar. I don't know. I just, I think that's kind of ridiculous to me. And, you know, they pull out the cell phone and they got to watch their speed and everything on the cell phone. It's like, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't that's know. true. Like, I'm cool with a little conversation, but not, you know, one of these two minute long, what should I do next kind of things. And your handler's not the one lifting it. Like, yeah, you should have trust in your trainer or whatever, but at the end of the day, you're you're the one that knows if it felt hard or not. Yep. Yeah. Like, for example, when you got done with that bench press in October... Well, I say October like it was last October, but how long has it been now? Three years? Two years? When did you hit Elite? Uh, I was still in – it was senior year of college, so yeah, I guess three years. Wait, what year is it? 2019? When did I yeah. graduate? Did I graduate in 2018, Becca? 2018, I graduated. So it would have been 2017 Okay. when I would have hit it. So, yeah. Wait, wait, you did your second attempt or – was it your second attempt bench? And that sucker, like I said, it, I told Andrew, I was like, man, that thing that thing was slow. I'd only go up five pounds. But, you know, Andrew could have told me, well, it felt really good. I'm going to go up, you know, 15 pounds. But I think it's good to get a little feedback. But at the end of the day, you got to make the call. Yeah. I don't know. I, that's just one of the things I think is funny, watching these people talk forever just to find out their attempts. And if you're a real elite person, I think you already have your attempts in mind before you even go to the meet. Mm-hmm. Or at least your first two. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I probably just made a lot of people mad. 
It's okay. Uh, that's, but, uh, yeah. That's the difference, man. You got to know what's going on in your life. Yep. Yep. So don't overthink. Be confident. And get some training done. That's all right. That's all we're talking about. But, hey, so how are you prepping for this, uh, the vegan, the 14-day vegan challenge, which I guess starts Monday the something? I don't know what the day is. I don't know. We still need to make a post on Instagram. So you'll probably, you'll probably see the post on Instagram before y'all even hear this podcast. But if you listen to our podcast from a week ago, we kind of brought up how we're going to do this going plant-based slash vegan, which is the same thing. Vegan just has a more ethical connotation with it, which is why we try to use plant-based. But anyway, we're going plant-based for 14 days. And <clears throat> I feel like the only thing we should ask out of people as far as this challenge goes is just to like write a little testimony at the end. Like, how did it make you feel? You know, how long did you stick with it? Did you stick with it for four days or did you go the whole 14? Maybe we'll make some stickers. I went 14 days plant-based or something. I don't know. Yeah. That would be cool. Like, That's, if, if y'all want to get on, on the 14-day on the, on the challenge, we're going to start. Uh, so, we're going to start Monday, October the 7th is when we will start the 14-day vegan challenge and it will end on monday the 21st of yeah. october and so that is what we'll do if if, if any listeners just want to hop on in for fun go plant-based or vegan for uh 14 days come join us and tell us how you feel if you do it all 14 days i will personally get your address and, and mail you a bag of pinto beans hey there you go if you and, do uh, it for 14 days, I will personally mail you a bag of pinto beans. And I haven't brought this up to Andrew yet, but he and I will will post what we eat every day on Instagram. Like maybe, or maybe we'll flip flop days. Like you'll post on Monday, I'll post on Tuesday. You do Wednesday, blah 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 blah. I'll yeah. check my total Instagram, so that way people can see what we're eating, what we're doing throughout the day. That sounds good to me. Yeah, you might get your own ideas and try something we ate for lunch for dinner. You never know. I'm also interested to uh, to see how how I feel after all of this going going on plant based. You know, my biggest thing with you, man, is that I'm afraid you're not going to eat enough. Huh? Maybe. Yeah. So, but the cool thing with being vegan or plant based is you can eat all you want to because your body is burning through it so quick. So if you want to have five potatoes for lunch, you can have five potatoes. It ain't going to hurt you. Yeah, it yeah. It, it will be kind of kind of different for me because you know I'm I don't know I can't I can't cook nine meals in a day. <laughs> you might so. have to you might have to um oh the word just left my brain. You might have to meal prep for the next fourteen days. Yeah. We'll, Just cook we'll everything on Sunday or something. We'll have to see how it goes. I mean, I'm interested to see how I feel, if I see any performance or just feel better. Um, you know, I'm, I agree that a, a, that more plants in your diet is good for you and that tons of meat consumption is probably not the best, you know, just in general. But I'm, I'm still not fully 100% convinced that that beef is always bad for you. Maybe I'm wrong. I think it's always bad for some people. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I think there's certain types of people that it's always bad for because of like certain certain diseases and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And that but, movie that we reviewed, The Game Changers, we're actually going to watch that Friday when it comes out on digital, like next Friday when well, or I guess when this podcast comes out. We'll be watching the video when y'all are listening to this podcast. Well, yeah, that's true. Andrew will finally get to see the documentary we talked about. So I'm, 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 I'm interested. I'm well, interested to see what you say after seeing it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it should be good. I'm looking forward to it. But I think that wraps this podcast up. I think so. I think uh, it's 
we're getting prepped and ready to take on the challenge. Oh, wait. No, we should talk about something else going on. What's that? Oh, yeah. I got my first jujitsu competition. Yeah. Well, so, I guess we'll delve, we'll delve into this a little bit, and then uh, we'll see how see how it goes. But for those that don't know, uh, I started training Brazilian jiu-jitsu oh, probably last November. I think I think it was towards the beginning of November, end of October. I started training jiu-jitsu at a uh, Tenth Planet. Uh, Huntsville. November so. 2018. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Well, uh, I've been training for... I guess I'm up close to a year. I've been trying to go three times a week. Um, yeah, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. That's what I've been trying to do. and I've been pretty consistent about it, going on those days. Um, yeah. But... It is a much different sport than powerlifting. Uh, well, usually you walked around, what, like 201, and now you're walking around like 195? Yeah. So that's one difference. It's keeping you, you got a lot more cardio going on. Yeah, and, and it's just it, man, the amount of detail. It's crazy. Well. Um, what I'm interested in is, yeah, you got this competition coming up. So how do you how do you prep for a competition? Like, does that tra- change your training, or is the whole gym well, prepping for competition? Like, how does that work? Well, as a white belt who don't know anything, I really don't know. Okay. Right, so what what we're doing as a gym this next week or this week is we're going to be drilling and practicing. Uh, the overtime. Uh, okay. Position. Um. So I mean, truth be known, this is my first competition. I'm a white belt. Uh, and there's a lot of surprisingly, Alabama it has a bunch of bunch of people that are really good at jujitsu. So I'm actually not expecting to do well at all. I'm a, I'm expecting because like there, there's people that are white belts for like three years. And so, I don't, who knows who I'll go up against, but, um, really the main goal is I just want to go have some fun and just kind of see what the atmosphere is like, how, how, are, how's it ran. Yeah. Uh, I don't really plan on, you know, I'm not planning on going there and smashing people. <laughs> like, I'll probably be the one getting <laughs> smashed if anything. Well, um, hey, I'll, I'll be right there in the stands watching you become a pretzel. Yep. So, my goal is to leave uninjured and just enjoy the day. Yeah, I'm sure you'll learn some stuff, too. Yeah. If I end up winning a match, well, hey. well there you go. I, I, I did something. All I right. Didn't... So, that's another question. How How do you win the overall thing? Is it by matches? Is it points? Like, so, do you have to beat three people? So what I think it is, which I might be way off on this. So it's broken up into uh, weight classes and belt divisions. So right. um, this tournament is, there's separate divisions for white belts and blue belts. And then purple and up, they uh, jumble together. So it's kind of a free for all there. Um and then you have your weight classes, which are UFC weight classes. And I think my weight class is called, I'm like middle heavy or super middle or something like that. It's 188 to 195. And uh, as far as you winning the whole thing, I think what it is, is I assume you just win your division. Like there's a person who won the the super middle th- white belt division. So and it's it's ba- I mean I think it's kind of like in powerlifting. I mean if no one registers for your weight class or belt, then I actually I think if no one registers for your weight class or belt, which I don't think happens very much, but yeah. if it ever did happen, I think you just get bumped up to the next weight class. 
or to the nearest to the nearest group that you can compete with. But let's say there's like six people in your class. Is it like a mini bracket to where the yeah, two people brackets. so the two people that win go up to the next round and then they face each other and then that person yeah. moves up? I think so. Okay. Well, I, I, I'll be curious to know if they do special stuff. You know, powerlifting has, like, best... I don't know how you do the best just award for so many classes. There, there is one that So you can eat class and belt level, maybe? Or maybe? I don't know. Okay. Here's an absolute class. I need to watch. It would be. Yeah, I think it's the equivalent of an approach. Okay. Uh, so, so around with people. Uh, maybe Tim gets me impressed for me. Uh, but yeah, I've been for um, I'm I'm learning a lot. I have no means to yeah. And I'm going to work and do that next weekend or this weekend to the podcast. And since we're starting that challenge the following Monday, we're going to pig out all weekend. So right. look for us to be on Instagram Live. We might go live at crickets or something. That's right. We're going. We're going to try out some of Huntsville's best restaurants. Yep. Well, be looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Having some last meals before the challenge. That's right. And we'll have to see how. Uh, I'm interested to see how this tournament goes. And it's a, I think it's, oh, it's also the first tournament that a large majority of the people from the Huntsville 10th planet are going to, because our gym has only been open, uh, for a year and some change. Do y'all, I know you shall sell your own rash guards and stuff, but do you have just like t- t-shirts that they sell? Uh, I think that's in the works. Okay, cool. But I don't actually know. Gotcha. Well, but, represent, bro. That's right. It's gonna it's gonna be a wild ride. But we'll we'll see what happens. Yes, sir. And you know, if you ever catch me at an Iron Boy meet and you want to throw down, I'll be open to it. <laughs> well. I think it's time for you to break this podcast down. I think it is. Get your smoothie down. Just as my smoothie gets to the end of its glass, this podcast has got to the end of its episode. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only a couple things you need to know in life. You need to know how to do your taxes so you don't go to jail. You need to know who to vote for so they don't put you in jail. And you need to know how to do something with your life so you don't spend all your life planning. It's about doing and planning. People that plan all day are kind of like chimpanzees. They go around scratching their butt and eating their poop. You do not want to be one of them. What you want to be is someone who is responsible. A go-getter wakes up in the morning, smells the roses, and smells the cheese in the oven thinking it's a mozzarella type of day. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, save the casserole from the oven. We're out of here. Peace. Up next is Iron Boy Nationals. The event will be on October 18th and 19th. That Friday evening will be our bench-only competition. And on the 19th, Saturday, will be the Full Power event. It will be held in Belmont, North Carolina. And once again, that's October 18th and 19th. We hope you come out, lift, watch, and support the event. See y'all later. Please subscribe and thank you for listening. Be sure to follow at CheckMyTotal on Instagram for all the latest updates.